There have been a lot of exciting updates to Midjourney over the last few weeks. From new versions of style reference, an updated image to text model, and the brand new character reference feature. In this video, I'll break down what you need to know about the latest Midjourney updates, but first, please make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. Midjourney now has four versions of style reference. Yes, you heard that right, four. If you're not familiar with style reference or SREF for short, this is a feature that allows you to apply the artistic style for a reference image to your Midjourney results. It applies elements like colors, medium, and overall visual aesthetics. So these are the four style reference versions listed in Midjourney's Discord announcement. Version one is the original style reference, which was released on January 31st, and it was the default up until March 14th. The second version of style reference became the default on March 14th up until March 21st. Version three is an upgraded release of version one, offering better performance. And then version four is an upgraded release of version two, and this is the one that's currently the default. You can pick which version you want to use by including the new parameter dash dash SV in your prompt. If you don't specify a version, it will use the current default. I know it can get confusing adding another parameter in the mix. They've stated in the weekly office hours that versioning style reference like this might only apply to the V6 model and should be more streamlined when V7 is released. So these updates aim to address two main issues. The first is improved performance. Previously, style reference would sometimes inadvertently bring in elements like people or objects from the reference image rather than just capturing the style. This should happen less often with the newer versions. The second improvement is with the style weight parameter dash dash SW. In SREF version one, the effect of the style reference ramped up quickly and seemed to plateau around a style weight of 50 using values higher than 50 had limited impact on the results. This early plateau still exists in the newer versions, but the overall performance at lower style weight values does seem more linear than before. So far, my preference is to use SREF version four, which is the default. I think it's more accurate and true to the reference images style. However, I really like some of the results that I'm getting with version three. They feel a bit more creative and interesting, even though the style strays a little from the reference image. Next, we'll talk about a feature that doesn't get a lot of attention. Did you know that Midjourney has an image to text model? This feature is called describe and it can be useful when you're struggling to find the right words to describe an image or when you just need inspiration for your prompts. Describe was first released about a year ago and it was initially tuned to work with Midjourney's V5 model, but as of the latest update, it has been optimized to provide text results that work best with V6. To use describe, type slash describe, a space, and then select link or image. If you choose link, you can paste in your image URL. If you select image, you can click to upload or drag and drop your image file. After adding your image, press enter. Midjourney will generate four text descriptions of your image. If artist names are included, they will almost always have a link where you can click to learn more about the artist. You can submit each of these results to Midjourney to run as Imagine prompts, or if you have fast mode turned on, you can click Imagine All to submit all four at once. If you want a new set of descriptions, just click the reroll button. So Describe gives you what we would call starter prompts. These text prompts are not going to recreate your input image exactly, but they will give you clues about the words or phrases that Midjourney considers most effective in describing the image. Words that are repeated across the prompts are good indicators that they might be powerful descriptors. The describe feature can be particularly helpful when you need inspiration for new prompts based on a reference image that you like, or when you wanna understand how Midjourney perceives and interprets different elements of an image. If you're using describe to find words that describe a specific style or aesthetic, I recommend trying the image as a style reference first and see if that gets you the results that you're looking for. And don't forget that you can use the shorten command to identify important words or phrases from describes results or for any prompt that you're working on. These tools may not give you exact solutions, but they are meant to help you through the prompting process. If you'd like a deep dive video on the describe feature or a comparison to other image to text tools, let me know down in the comments. And now let's talk about the long awaited character reference feature. Character reference is similar to style reference, but instead of matching a visual aesthetic based on a reference image, it tries to match the character. This is huge news for anyone wanting to create visuals for stories where the same character appears in different scenes or outfits. With character reference, you can maintain character similarity across multiple image generations. It's not perfect, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. 
To use character reference, type your prompt, then include dash dash CREF at the end of your prompt and a URL containing the character that you want to use as a reference. Midjourney will then try to replicate that same character in your results. Now it's not going to copy exact details such as a design on a t-shirt, accessories, or freckles, but it should roughly capture the overall visual characteristics of that character. Character reference is going to work best with images made by Midjourney and with characters that have notably distinct features. I think one really cool way to use character reference is to transpose a character into different art or photographic styles. I used this image as a character reference and prompted for a photo taken with Kodak Portra 400 film, pop art, and a color hand-drawn sketch. With these two, I didn't include any text about the character in the prompt, but we still got the character. When a character reference is provided, you should almost always get images that contain that character. And that character reference doesn't have to be human. Character reference can also be used with non-human characters like I did with this little moss creature. The strength of the character reference can be controlled with the character weight parameter dash dash CW. However, this doesn't quite work like some of the other strength parameters that you might be used to. The character weight range is from zero to hundred with a default value of hundred. So if you don't specify character weight, Midjourney will just use 100. When character weight is 100, Midjourney will lock onto the face and the clothing of the reference character. When character weight is zero, Midjourney will only lock onto the face, allowing you to change things like clothing while retaining the character's facial features. So the point that I wanna make with character weight is that Midjourney will always lock onto the face of a reference character, regardless of what the character weight is. So character weight should mostly be used for changing a character's clothing. So I've been doing some additional testing on character reference and prep for a deep dive video that I'm working on, and I'm discovering some nuances that require workarounds through prompting. For example, I prompted a woman walking through a field of wildflowers, and I used this image as the character reference. Several of my results had her head on backwards or at unnatural angles, not ideal. This can be fixed by rewording the text prompt so I got rid of walking through because I felt that it was pushing Midjourney to create more images where the character was walking away from rather than toward the camera. Instead, I used the word standing. I also specified that she is looking at the camera. Then I ended up adding that she is wearing a red t-shirt because although the character weight was set to 100, it didn't keep her shirt style. It kept the color, but not the style. Character reference isn't perfect, but this is only the first version, so it's bound to get better over time. I'd love to hear about your experiences so far with character reference and any specific topics that you'd like me to cover in my upcoming character reference deep dive video. Lots going on in the mid journey world. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it can be a challenge to keep up with all of the new features and updates. Before you go, please make sure you click the like button, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.